Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Prather, and I am bringing you Meditations from the Mound this week. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 7, Everyone who is called by name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. That's a beautiful passage from the lips of Isaiah, inspired by God, that shows us that we were created for the glorification of God. You know, there's so many people that go through life <clears throat> without any real meaning. They just exist. And they have no real direction and no purpose. But the child of God was created by God to glorify and honor him, honor his name and everything that we do and we say. Today we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about the wonderful subject of what kind of life that really brings glory and honor to God. You see, when we obey the gospel and we become Christians and give our life to the Almighty God, as in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 through 20, it says, Do you know that as many of you were brought by the blood, bought by the blood of Christ, they've obeyed the gospel, that we belong to God, and that our body and our spirit are now God's? We've given ourselves over to God, and as a result, we want to make sure that our life brings glory and honor to the Almighty God. Paul would say it in this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all that glorify, do all in the glory of God. The Lord put it in this way on the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 Jesus said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven that's pretty powerful as you really think about man's purpose and the meaning behind life Solomon brought it all into a grand conclusion in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. We want to think about that. Well, what can I do? We want to make this lesson as practical to daily Christian Christianity as we can. We want to ask ourselves, what can we do on a daily practical level? What can I do in my life that will bring glory and honor to the name of God? We begin by showing that from the scriptures. If we are to glorify God, we need to live a life that has the main purpose of putting God first. I want to remind you again of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Paul said, whether we eat or whether we drink, even in things like unto that, whatever we do, do all in the glory of God. If my life and yours is going to bring honor to God, I've got to live with purpose. I want to make sure that my purpose is to bring God the glory and the honor in everything that we do and we say. When you think about this idea, there are a host of passages that can teach us about the dedication we should have and, the, and how we should really live. I'm reminded of this one that Paul mentioned in Philippians 1, 21. Paul said, as, I related to, as it related to his life, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do you think the life of the apostle Paul brought glory to God? Oh, you bet it did. When he changed his way of living, when he obeyed the gospel, when he suffered, when he preached in various places, and when he went about teaching the gospel, people could look at Paul and notice that change. When they ask, what does this cost him to change? Jesus Christ is the answer and has always been the answer. I'm reminded of Christ's words in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first, there, there's our purpose. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You know, as we live <clears throat> life with purpose, we live every day for the Lord and Savior and not ourselves. Jesus said, 
If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. My friend, we get right down to the basics of glorifying God. It all starts by examining ourselves. Examine yourselves. Test yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. And making sure that every day our purpose is bringing God the glory and the honor in everything that we do. Too many times in life, if we're not careful, man's pride gets in the way. Men want others to look at him. Look at the good I've done. Look at what I've said. Uh, that's not what it's about. We want God honored through our lives and by our actions. We want people to look at us and give God the glory. Matthew 5, 16. Another aspect that brings glory to God is when we're big enough to own up to and confess our sin in our life. In Joshua 7, 19, Joshua is dealing with sin that has plagued Israel. As a result, they're suffering defeats in battle. As a result, calamity is coming upon the Israelites, and so the identity of one man and his family has disobeyed God. As a result, he needs to acknowledge this and come forward with that sin. Listen to Joshua 7:19. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, listen to this. Give glory to the God of Israel and make confession to him, and tell me now, what you have done, do not hide it from me. Achan's sin was affecting everybody. The whole camp was feeling the consequences of that sin. People were dying in battle. There was God's anger that was being unleashed on Israel because this man disobeyed God. Notice again the words of Joshua. My son, he said, give glory to God and confess what you've done. Friend, we got to own up to our sin. We have to confess it. When we acknowledge it, it's bringing glory and honor to God's name. Because that's what God has told us to do. Remember in 1 John 1, chapter 1, 7 through 9, John says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, as Jesus as he is in the light, as Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of the Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar, and the truth is not in us. But we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all inequity. So God wants us to confess. The word confess means to lay alongside of. God knows what we've done. He's not ignorant of that. All things are open and naked before him and with whom we must give an account. In Hebrews 4.13, But then when we lay alongside of what God already knows, we acknowledge our sin, we acknowledge the holiness and the need for God to save us. James said it in this way, James 5, 16 through 17. Pray for one another, confess your trespasses and sins to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effect of, of fervent prayer and of a righteous man overcomes much. Friend, you've got to acknowledge, and I have to acknowledge, that we've all sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. I've got to recognize and honor God for the fact that only through his plan and his avenue can I be saved. Thank God that we're, if we're willing to repent and confess and acknowledge our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all inequity. Thirdly, we, we think about a life that glorifies God. One of the great ways that we bring honor to God is, is by living a life of purity. I want you to notice the words in 1 Peter chapter 1 through or 115. With me as we think about pure lives honoring God, but as he who called you is holy, be holy in all conduct. You know, if I'm going to be like God, I'm going to be I'm going to imitate Christ. 1 Peter 2:21 and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Then, friend, I want to try to be holy as God is holy. When I do that, I'm reflecting the holiness, the majesty, and the power of the Almighty God in my life. When I obey the gospel, that's what purpose, that's what promise I do. Right? In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, Paul says, Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not on your own 
What do you mean? I'm not on my own. You were brought at a price. Remember that. You were bought at a, at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. As I strive to live with purity, <clears throat> I'm not doing it in a way people say, look at me, or I'm not bragging about it for other reasons. We strive to live pure, holy lives. We are reflecting the purity and the holiness of God. In Hebrews 12, 14, without holiness, no one can see God. We want people to see God living in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. As Colossians 1 will say, we want others to see that and realize God is the motivation, the force behind the holiness in each of our lives. Another way to glorify God on a practical level is by being people of prayer. You know, prayer honors God. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 as he thought about the subject of prayer and how it brings honor and glory to God. Jesus said in John 14, 13, whether you ask in my name that I will do that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. God is glorified when we ask through Christ through his son, through the mediator. Prayer is the one, one of the great ways that we can honor and glorify God. When we pray, we ought to mention and talk about the holiness of God. What a privilege it is to come before the very throne of the Almighty God. In Hebrews 4, 16, how unworthy we are to be in the presence of an awesome God. Luke 17, 10, Jesus said, and you, when you've done all things commanded, you say, I am unprofitable servant. I am only done that which is my duty to do so. Prayer brings honor to the name and the person and the person of Almighty God. Another way Christian brings glory to God is by living a life of thankfulness. Listen to the words of 2 Corinthians 4, 15. The scripture says, for all things are for your sakes. That grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. As I acknowledge every good and every perfect gift comes from above the Father of light, from whom there is no shadow, a variation of turning. James 1, 17, as I thank God, I am glorifying and honoring Almighty God. Well, folks, these are just ways that we can do in our normal everyday life, a way, to, simple ways that we can honor and glorify God. The scripture tells us to do this. It's there and plain and simple. And if we want to be good Christians, if we want to do anything, we must live in a way that glorifies God. If you want to bring other people into Christianity, the way that you're going to do that is through your own actions, the way you live. Folks, I hope this does something to you. I hope this means something for you. Um, please keep coming back each week, watching these meditations from the mound. We are very honored and thankful to be able to bring them to you. You guys have a good night.